Welcome to this tutorial on using John the Ripper, one of the most powerful password cracking tools available on Linux. In this video, we'll walk you through how to install John the Ripper, generate and work with password hashes, and use word lists for brute force attempts. This tool is a must know for cybersecurity enthusiasts and ethical hackers who want to test the strength of their own passwords. Important reminder, use John the Ripper only on hashes you own or have permission to test. Unauthorized password cracking is illegal and unethical. This guide is strictly for educational and testing purposes. Let's get started. Before we install John the Ripper, let's understand how it works. This tool is designed to crack passwords by analyzing password hashes. But what are password hashes and how do we obtain them? In Linux, password hashes for system accounts are stored in the slash etc slash shadow file which John can analyze to attempt cracking user passwords. Hashes can also be captured via packet sniffing on less secure protocols like HTTP, FTP, or Telnet, which sometimes transmit passwords in plain text. In this step, we're installing John the Ripper. On most Linux distributions, John isn't pre-installed, but installing it is straightforward. The package name is universally John, regardless of the Linux distribution you're using. For example, on Fedora, Red Hat, or Rocky Linux, you'd use DNF, and on Arch or Manjaro, you'd use Pacman. Since we're on Kali Linux, which is based on Debian, we'll use the APT package manager to install John the Ripper. This process is similar on other Debian-based distributions like Ubuntu or Linux Mint. John the Ripper comes with its own built-in word list typically located in slash usr slash share slash john slash password dot lst. This word list gets installed automatically with John. For more extensive testing, Kali Linux includes a variety of word lists which you can locate using the locate word list command. If the built-in word lists fail, John will switch to brute forcing, trying every possible combination. While effective brute forcing is resource intensive, requiring significant computational power and time. Advanced hardware or specialized systems often excel at such tasks, making this method a fallback for tougher passwords. Dash dash list formats is a handy option in John the Ripper that lets you see all the hashing methods it supports. When you run this command, you'll get a detailed list of formats, including commonly used ones like MD5, SHA256, Bcrypt, and many others. This feature ensures you can identify and target the correct hash type for cracking, making your process more efficient. Now that we know the formats, let's proceed to use John in action. This command combines the information from the etc slash passwd and etc slash shadow files into a single file named hashes.out. The unshadow tool included with John the Ripper is specifically designed for this task. By merging these files, we create the necessary format that John can use to attempt cracking the password hashes. Once the file is generated, we're ready to move on to cracking these hashes. To crack the password hash, we use the command john double dash format equals crypt hashes dot out. This instructs John to use the crypt hashing method and attempt to crack the hashes from the hashes dot out file. Once initiated, John will process the hashes using its default word list or any custom word list you have provided. After running this command, you'll need to wait as John attempts to find the password. If successful, the cracked password will be displayed in the terminal. For example, you might see output like password colon Linux config. This indicates that the password for the user Linux config has been successfully cracked. Any cracked passwords will also be stored in the directories .john file for future reference. You can view these results anytime by running cat command. This is helpful if you need to revisit the cracked passwords later. In conclusion, we've demonstrated how to use John the Ripper for password cracking on Linux, emphasizing the importance of understanding cybersecurity tools for testing and securing your systems. Always remember to use these tools ethically and responsibly. Thank you for watching, and if you found this video helpful, please like, share, and subscribe for more tutorials like this one. See you next time.